Welcome everyone to Loud and Proud Orlando. It's Monday, uh, August 29th, uh, 8.35 p.m. Thank you so much for being uh, with us live. Uh, about 14 people live right now. Thank you for your support. Uh, it's Tashomania. 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 All right. Uh, I think everybody's very happy to definitely uh, get the W against NYCFC. Uh, a rival that since we, since Orlando came into the MLS, uh, some of that we've had a quite a bit of a history uh, against NYCFC, so it's always good to definitely get the W. And in what fashion that uh, Orlando got the W yesterday, especially with a man ha has been singled out, has been called uh, the worst player ever, um, forever, ever, and ever. Um, but somebody that, in my personal opinion, he's one of the best uh, people. Uh, wearing purple right now, uh, a leader in the locker room, somebody that definitely uh, brings uh, the poise and I say Sen, Sen master, you know, uh, you know, um, gravity, you know, makes it everything so level um, in, in that locker room and, um, you know, Tesh Hockindele, right? So uh, we're going to talk about that and we're also going to dive in into Pride, OCB. There's also a new signing as well for OCB, which just scored a couple of minutes ago um and but before we start um and we go to all our we're five people now live so if you guys are wondering why these two lovely ladies with me here i just want to start introducing them it's casey and emma from the orlando city cast um they just had their one year anniversary and obviously they're in you know they're our guests today in, in the show we're going to discuss all kinds of topic with them you know, topics with them and also they're going to read your questions and they're going to answer all your questions. So uh, welcome, uh, Emma and Casey. Let's start with Emma. How are you today? I'm doing good. You? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, <laughs> good to have you over. Uh, fantastic uh, podcast you have as well and what you guys have. Uh, very delighted that you guys are here. Uh, how are you, mm -hmm. Casey? I'm doing good, especially after that game last night. <laughs> all right. That's right. That's right. And um, before we, we start, uh, and before I give the mic to Paula and, and Dave, uh, I want to encourage everybody to keep supporting us and uh, just uh, follow us on Twitter. We're also available on Facebook, and also we're available on YouTube as Latin Pride Orlando. Um, you know, oh, boom, hold on, magic, right there, brand new banner. There you go. I forgot that I had it. <laughs> Click on the notification bell for all notifications. Uh, drop us a like and subscribe. We're also available um, on audio form for everybody that's listening to us right now. We're available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as Loud and Proud Orlando. So thank you so much. We are right now 435 subs. Let's get to the 500 mark. Uh, we're starting September very soon, hopefully with another Orlando City W and another Pride W coming up. So, um, And uh, I just want to introduce Paola. How are you today? <laughs> doing fantastic best time of the week being with y'all happy monday is i'm happy because i'm with casey and emma i'm with luis i'm with david i'm with a w with that stoppage time also got a banger tesha had another banger how can we start this week even better right so i'm happy and even better with you guys so Hopefully we can um, end even happier the week. So let's see. And then in the comfort of uh, his home, here's Dave. How are you, Dave? Once again here on the couch where all dreams come true. My wife kicked me out of the kitchen tonight. So <laughs> this will have to do, my friends. Uh, listen, I had a, uh, it was a tough weekend at the beginning. Pride obviously lost. My beloved Steven Itch, the Tricky Reds of England, lost at the death uh, by a glass, I have to admit. And uh, my Israeli team, Maccabi Haifa, um, just went buck wild and uh, defeated uh, Hapoel Besheva, uh, which I don't like those guys, but hey, what are you going to do? And then I went to the stadium thinking this is going to be a 1 1 or a 1 0. Maybe a loss, but not, no. Our friend Tesh Akindele, the Airbnb king, evicted uh, New York City. As you guys know, New York City, I have no love for those guys. They still 
They steal chairs. They steal seats at the stadium. They pack a little kids, try to choke cops. Not a good bunch. And uh, I hope that uh, I, I receive information from the club that they did a seat count. All of them are still there. So with that said, uh, first of all, uh, I, wa I want to say I was with uh, visited Paola and Alec in their podcast, Pilo de Esquina. We had a great time. Um, and uh, I noticed that compared to the other episodes, it doesn't have as many downloads. So I guess once again, I continue my streak of lowering the quality of every podcast I'm in. And uh, with that said, um, we have... These two ladies here today, I, I told the guys we definitely need to have them. Uh, Emma and Casey uh, have a, a great a great podcast, and I'm going to allow them to introduce their product here in a second. Uh, they have a great podcast that just turned a year old. Uh, it's a show, obviously, to young women. Uh, the, 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 the show is nothing but them talking from the perspective of somebody that plays the sport. Uh, is, is, is very smart. Uh, I, it's like sitting on the couch with them, listening to them talk. And, uh, and, and that's why I think it's great. It's a show uh, from a different perspective, from a perspective that you don't hear a lot because, let's be honest, podcasts are mostly middle-aged men. Uh, there's uh, Female voices are very rare. As a matter of fact, Paola, uh, before the girls uh, started their show, uh, was the only one out there. So... With that said, uh, I hope that you guys, if you haven't uh, subscribed to them, uh, follow them on social media, you do. Uh, trust me, uh, I am the snobbiest person there is. I was like, hey, I'm 46 years old. These 14, 15-year-old girls have nothing to teach me, and I find myself uh, listening every week. <laughs> so, girls, um, you know, whoever wants to go first, uh, please introduce your podcast. Um, how long you been a Orlando City fan, and what does Orlando City fan? Uh, what does Orlando City mean to you? Casey, feel free to go first. <laughs> okay. Um, so I've been an Orlando City fan since I would say probably the MLS era. Um, I remember going to maybe like one or two games at Disney and Camping World Stadium, but overall, just since the MLS era. Um, and yeah, we started our podcast a little over a year ago and it was basically just because we were told that we talked too much about <laughs> soccer <laughs> and yeah, what about you, Emma? Well, I've been a fan since 2019. It was before the MLS is back tournament. And like, I also remember like being super obsessed with Chris Mueller and he was number nine at that time. <laughs> Because the year before he was 17, then he became number nine. So that's how I kind of remember it. I've been a fan of the Pride, though, since 2015, since they were first, like, a thing or first started. And I kind of remember going to, like, Camping World and watching them play. The funny thing is I rem remember doing, like, the tailgating and partying and stuff, but I don't remember <laughs> actually being inside the stadium. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I, like, we have pictures of being, like, inside yeah. the stadium. But my main memory from – going to camping world is the tailgating in yeah, case he was the one that like introduced me to like orlando pride and orlando city and stuff because i'd played soccer with her we've been playing soccer together since we were five years old which is almost 10 years now which is crazy to think of and then we have the orlando city cast and like years prior we were just like you know it'd be really funny if we started a podcast and just ranted about soccer because we'd always do it after games and stuff and then my dad was like you should actually seriously consider doing it. And then we actually ended up doing it. So here we are with our podcast, and it's now a year old, which is crazy. You know, it, it's, it's, I never personally thought I was going to get the opportunity to, you know, re, you know, essentially give back to the Orlando community in a way, um, not only by covering, you know, getting the chance to cover the Pride and cover Orlando City. Um, I'm, and I totally relate to that. You know, I'm, I, was, I was born, in a way, into the sport myself back home in Peru. Huge soccer culture there. And, uh, you know, when, like I was telling you guys off, off, off record, you know, when, when I heard that there was a team coming into Orlando, I didn't care if it was from Austin or whatever. I care that it represented Orlando, and uh, I didn't care if they played in a high school stadium uh, behind a 
a borders. There's no longer a borders anymore. Or, you know, it, it didn't matter. Uh, I was going to be there and support just for the love of the sport. And, uh, you know, now getting to see Miguel Gallardo winning cups and now seeing Miguel Gallardo calling like calling me my first name. Hey, you know, or saying hello and, you know, fist bumping each other. Like that's, I never thought it was going to happen, honestly. And, uh, you know, uh, I want to say hello to Miguel too, if he's watching, but, um, you know, the chance and the product you guys are putting out um, at such a um, you know, young age too, you know, uh, it, 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 you guys are going to get better and better and better. So uh, kudos to you guys. Uh, you guys have a fantastic podcast and uh, I, I'm putting here um, their Twitter and all their information is right here. So if you guys want to follow them, now they have their Bass, um, Buzzsprout um, link right here. Um, I'm sure they're in every major, you know, uh, I know I saw them, uh, I subscribed through Apple Podcasts myself because it's easier for me, but, you know, they're everywhere too. Uh, and just, just follow on their Twitter, you know, they're right here, um, the Orlando City Cast, um, and they always put fantastic content, you know, and um, I want to give you guys uh, kudos for that uh, wholeheartedly and, you know, it'll be, it'll be a pleasure to do more collabs too down the road. Um, I think it'll be Awesome. And are you guys thinking of going to UCF or are you guys are thinking of uh, leaving, leaving Orlando? Ooh. For like college? Yeah. I want to leave Orlando. I mean, UCF <laughs> would be like a great sp like college. Like if I get a scholarship or something, I'd love to yeah. go there. But <laughs> I've been like a fan of like Michigan and up mm -hmm. there, and like up north and stuff. So I'd love to go up there. Fantastic. Be tired of the sun. <laughs> you just you just um heartbreak Luis heart right now let no, me tell you I'm just kidding uh, yeah, I'm just kidding <laughs> no, I never I never I got I never got the chance I, I think if I would have given the chance to leave or, um Florida I probably would have taken the chance but I I never I never did it was just like okay I'm I, gradu I, I graduated Olympia I here you go I'm, I'm going to I'm going to UCF now you know it just kind of felt it was the right path so well, as uh, as someone who uh joined the military right out of high school i can tell you that you know this is the opportunity to go get out of your comfort zone uh travel um i always found myself gravitating back to the warm weather because well me and the cold weather we don't get along we have established that he stayed, the cold stays north of Florida and I stay here. So <laughs> that's, that's basically it. But hey, we are here to talk to, about the beautiful game of football. And the girls uh, in uh, Luis were in attendance this Friday as uh, our Orlando Pride face. Uh, I mean, uh, where are they now? Because they, they were, see first they were Washington, they were Seattle. Uh, then Tacoma, what no, I don't no, even they know. Face, they face the all rain, uh, all I, rain, in my opinion. Um, Olympic Leon rain, I, I call them because it's Olympic Leon. Um, all rain, they, in my opinion, should be a top contender in NWSL. I don't know what Emma thinks, but or, or Casey, but I believe uh, Orlando Price show a lot of um, resilience and endurance. Uh, you know, you have to understand, and I was actually talking to Miguel Gallardo about this, and, you know, there's really nothing to analyze. I mean, in a way, if my own personal opinion, I think Orlando did a fantastic job uh, the first half. Um, they created a lot of chances. They tried out. It was a very choppy game, in my opinion. Uh, and um, it's just the players that all rain has are world-class caliber players. And um, our squad... Um, they are fantastic players, in my opinion. They're playing as a unit. The culture has improved tremendously from what the team has been from the last three coaches, in my opinion. But nevertheless, is their first. A lot of the top players that are excelling in the Orlando Pride right now is their first season in the MLS. For, sorry, NWSL. First season in the NWSL. So it, it, you know, when you have somebody like Megan Rapino, you have Bosser. You have Fishlock, you know, you have, you know, all these players, Sofia Huerta, you know, and and at some point, those type of players are going to know, okay, 
I'm going to be playing hiding my key using Dragon Ball reference. I'm going to hide my key a little bit. You know, I'm going to wait till maybe the 45 minutes of the second half, and I'm going to elevate my key a little bit higher, you know, my power level. I'm going to elevate my power level a little bit higher. And then, you know, when you have such a physical, you know, playing in Orlando is rough because of the humidity, you know, it, it started affecting all rain didn't know how to react uh, the first half, in my opinion. But then obviously you start seeing their stamina increase in the second half. And unfortunately, they got the W. What were your thoughts, Emma, regarding the game? Orlando Pride did pretty well. I'm really impressed with what Seb Hines has done with the Orlando Pride, first of all. Like, Orlando Pride and Seb Hines, like, went together. I don't know how to explain it, but Seb Hines has done really well for them. And also, OL Reign, as you said, is a very tough competition. I mean, you got Megan Rapino, Rose Lavelle, Fishlock, super good players all in that squad. But I think we did pretty well holding them and defending them. That score could have been a lot bigger, like four to one or something like that. And I think we did pretty well holding them and keeping them from scoring more goals. And what were your thoughts, uh, Casey, regarding the game? Um, from like the first half and then to the second. Um, I thought it was def it was a fun game to watch. Definitely, um, seeing uh, the Orlando Pride goal, that was really fun to see, um, and just seeing how they were just nonstop like def defending and keeping up with OL Rain, obviously until the end when um, Megan Rapino scored. But they they didn't give up in the middle. Of especially towards the second half um, when OL Reign were like real, it was mostly in our defensive half. We just, we just didn't give up and we just kept fighting. So. Yeah. And, you know, um, I don't know if you either Dave or Paula saw the game, but I mean, I'm putting a picture here from Caria Bello. She obviously teams are already noticing what players to double mark. And she was one of the players that all rain knew we cannot let this player be a danger, a danger in the flanks. And uh, obviously she had a couple of chances, maybe not the ones that she probably would have hoped for, but uh, you know, these young players that are is the first season in the NWSL, they're taking the lead literally by the throat. And they're saying, we are here. We're here to compete. I don't care if it's Portland or Rain. I don't care if you're playing the national team. I'm going to come here and I'm going to disrupt your game. I'm going to make it difficult for, for, for you to attack, to, to do transition attacks to us. And I'm going to defend well. And I mean, that culture that Seb Hines, Jaws Barnes, and now Miguel Gallardo are installing is because all those three players have won in purple already. So, Rather than, and I, again, I don't want to compare and contrast with other coaches, but Seb, Giles, and Miguel know what, what it is to play not only in, that, in Orlando, what it is to play for the fans that are in the stands, and they have lived in Orlando long enough to know the culture and know what it takes to defend and win you know, some of them championships with Orlando. So I, I like the fact that they're kind of in, you know, developing that culture. And I can't wait, honestly, to see what this team is going to do next season. And if they make the playoffs, it will be the cherry on the cake, in my opinion. I don't know. What, what are your um, no, I, to To build on what you guys have talked about, um, people tend to forget that uh, Giles Barnes and – also, Seb Hines, they're players that uh, came from, from the English game. You know, they're, they're English. Uh, Seb obviously has an American dad, but um, they, they played in, in League Two, League One, the Championship. Uh, they come from academies uh, in, in the English game. They, they have played in the United States. In the, in the case of Giles Barnes, uh, he played in Mexico. He played in India. Uh, and uh, also they both had their turns with the uh, the under-22s for England. Uh, Miguel Gallardo, obviously, uh, great career in USL, great career in the NASL, 
uh, and the MASL as well. This, these are individuals that understand uh, the, the mentality of football. And I want to remind everybody, this is, this is a crew put together out of do me a solid on a pinch. And they're doing fantastic. And um, while, yeah, you know, it sucks to concede a goal that late. But let's be honest. Um, the rain, they, they, they are, they're well built. Uh, they have, uh, you know, Megan uh, Rapino as, as much as I dislike her on a personal level. Um, uh, you know, I have to admit she's a fantastic footballer. Um, yeah. She got in a dangerous position. And um, like I always say, football is cruel and unpredictable. If you have never received a late goal, you have never football. That's it. That's, that's the story. You know, we're gonna, obviously going to be talking about Tesha Kindela's dagger. But like I mentioned before, we, uh, when we started, uh, my English team uh, was on the other end of that one. And as an Orlando City fan, we have been many times in the receiving end of those. So um, all I have to say is if this, this, this gentleman, who in my opinion had earned the, 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 the position, I mean, we should, we should oh, enshrine sure. them uh, officially. We should give them the weapons, the money, the talent, the scouting to build the on Orlando Pride. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been I've been uh, casually watching the Orlando Pride since they uh, since they came into the league in 2016, and uh, this is the best Orlando Pride that we have seen in a while. And I gotta tell you why. They score. They're solid. They're compact. They uh, actually look like they're having fun. They like each other. And one of my fa favorite things, and with this I conclude, is the fact that when the players interact with the coaching staff, is always. Uh, in a in a in a in a professional way, but also jovial. You know, they they enjoy being uh, being coached by this man. They 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 understand what they're supposed to be doing on the pitch, and it shows. Yeah, we lost, but you know, uh, you're gonna lose. You know, if you're gonna play, you're gonna lose. That's uh, that's how this game is. Uh, Paul, um, what are your thoughts uh, regarding the game? I didn't see it because I was not at home. I was. Um with some friends eating and and I asked Alec my fiance oh so the pride is is um playing Rapino um team what is the score and Alec told me oh it's tied they won they they tied and I'm like oh my god so they have been unbeaten eight games and then he's like oh no no it, they lost to one i'm like oh that is fine because they have been um more time together all these years um with the same players and all that stuff so it, it, i'm sad they lost but at the same time like the lady said and and david said and you said um i like what seb Hines is doing they're creating momentum and I'm looking forward for for the future for the pride. All right, um, let's 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 uh, watch some comments from um, Seth Hines real quick. Uh, he did, and and I do want to um, say, you know, they have this take no prisoners attitude of the pride, and uh, personally, I think that's what's making them a winning team. And again, is their first time for most of this squad playing together as a team. And, you know, they all come from different colleges, different universities, um, all walks of life. And, you know, they're playing for the City of Beautiful. And I, I love that. I don't know. Um, before we go into the, a little bit of the comments of Seth Hines, um, do, you, do you want to add anything, MR Casey, regarding the pride? No, you're good. I don't think so, no. All right, so let's go with the with the footage real quick. And uh, for everybody that's dropping the comments, we'll read them in just a moment. Against uh, rain players on her side, if you can tell us about it. Kai's been tremendous since she's come into the game. You know, she just keeps getting better and better. It's the same for a lot of players. You know, um, um, I think. In, in possession, we could have helped her out a little bit more, you know, trying to get into spaces and then quick uh, passes. But we said at the start of the game, we're going to have to win our individual duels. You're going to have to win your individual battles. It's they play wingers who like to get wide and dribble. Um, you know, it throws off a little bit. Hoyt's not playing right wing at times. Um, but, you know, I thought she did terrific well, terrifically well, along with 
you know, the rest of the bat line. Um, you know, the bat line keeps changing. Carrie comes in today. Tony's out, obviously. Uh, we've got Haley coming in, and these new players are starting to learn how we want to play as well. And it's it's going to take time for them to to learn, and we have to do a, a good job of educating um, our players the same as Ali Ali want as well. All right, so um, I don't know if you guys could hear it. Um, if you guys could hear it fine. All right. Um, I mean, he was just talking about uh, Erica Timrak, right? Uh, she he she had a phenomenal game, um, and she just didn't have a lot of help uh, on that side of the field, and that's where Ol Rain saw the, those spaces, and that's how that second goal came about. Um, you know, and, and he could just kind of talked about. You know, everyone, um, everybody has to win their individual battles, right? Um, every single player needs to win their individual battles. And it's kind of putting a lot of responsibility on the players, um, you know, uh, a lot of responsibility on the players. And the, the players are taking that ball and going with it. And, and the good thing is that he's built such a good culture that, you know, it, it shows on the pitch. Um, then they are, everyone wants to win. Uh, and honestly, I mean, I've been covering the, the team for two years. I haven't seen that type of attitude the, the, the last two years. So um, great job for the Orlando Pride, in my opinion. I hope they continue uh, on their winning end. And uh, let's read some comments from people that are um, waiting here. Uh, this is uh, Citrus FC. Interesting format tonight. It says, thank you so much. Um, Joshua Tall. Yeah, it is. Uh, Citrus FC, did I miss the important news or are we already on the Pride? No, 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 no. We're, we're starting with the Pride today. So yes. thank you so much, Citrus. Hector Ayala, uh, they are going to park the bus like with every other MLS team they defeat and just hope for the best and for a quick attack. Okay, I think he's talking about Orlando City. Waffles, Inc. I want to say a lot of waffles. This is a great food, by the way, you know, waffles. Uh, I think the Sacramento game is going to be closer than people think. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on the Sac on the Sacramento game, Emma? Well, I'm super excited that it's going to be sold out, first of all. That's going to be yeah. a fun game to be experiencing, first of all. And another happy thing is normally I don't go to Orlando City games because, like, the ticket prices can be expensive sometimes because I already have Orlando Pride season tickets. But with the cup games, my mom's been buying us tickets to go. So we've gotten, like, lower bowl seats, which has also been a really cool experience. Wow. And I know a coach that used to play on Sacramento, the USL team. So – that's going to be really cool, too. So I'm just really excited to see a final game. It's fantastic. Uh, what about you, Casey? I'm also, just like Emma said, super excited that Orlando City's in a final. Like, we're so close to finally getting a trophy. I just I really want to see it happen. And in person, too, because um, I'm also going with my dad. And it's fantastic. It's just I'm so excited, and I just really, really want them to win. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, and then, you know, we haven't lifted our trophy since 2013, Luis. Yeah, no. And uh, the girls here were were toddlers. So listen, we just got we got to win. They're gonna go five through three. I already said it when it happens. Don't come crying to me. It's five three three. We're gonna just uh, like like uh, our friends have been saying. They're gonna be parking the bus. Um, the one thing that is important to say, they're going to be playing Saturday, um, this Saturday, at Louisville. Louisville this year is red hot. Red hot. I think they, they're going to be in the final once once more. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know what kind of team they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna put there. Sacramento cannot give itself the luxury of just gifting a game because they're also in the playoff hunt. And then from there, they're going to be coming down to Orlando. And we're going to basically have a, a week off. They're super ticked off. Their fan base is, is crying foul. But you know what? If USL doesn't think it's important to yeah. give rest to their team, they, I'm not going to – you know what I'm saying? I'm, what, I, what are we going to do? You know, we're not a charity here. You know, we're not <laughs> a charity. I want to win. I want to beat them. That's right. I want to beat them. Right. So I mean, I, I'm going to be there with my sons. Um, I already – I already in my head thinking of me flying my flag, crying, doing the Michael Jordan with the trophy. Listen, I, I, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to go. What about you, Paula? 
I took the, the next day off. That's the only thing that I'm gonna say. I already said to my boss, I'm not coming the next day. I have put, I put PTO, I'm tailgating and everything. I, we're gonna win. And I, mean, I have my, my camera ready. I'm not, let, let me say this. I, I said it in the um, preview podcast and everything. I was gonna dye, my, not dye, spray no, my, my no, hair. No, no. No, I'm not gonna do it because I was talking to my coworkers um, like about G, it. Like no, 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 no. And let me tell you why. My wedding is my wedding is in a month, oh, and wow. I have a little bit <laughs> bleach on it. And if I do it, I'm gonna mess it up. Wow. So I'm not gonna mess up my hair. That's the only reason why. But if my wedding was not in a month, I would probably would would do it. But I'm still going to be there. I'm still going to go crazy. Um, not drunk, but crazy. Probably drunk with water. Um, but ha having a good time. So I'm looking forward for it. It's a, it's a make or break. I mean, this could be, <laughs> I mean, coming from, I went to the 2009 NBA final, Orlando Magic against the LA Lakers. I was torn because I'm a, uh, aside of, you know, being a suffering Orlando Magic fan, I also have quite a lot of respect for Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. And uh, I got the opportunity to go with my brother and my father to watch that game. It was heartbreak uh, seeing a team that you follow the whole year and years prior to finally get into the final and then loosen it right there and then. Uh, from that moment, Orlando hasn't won jack. Uh, aside USL trophies, which, I mean... There are USL trophies. Uh, I was I celebrated for those USL trophies, just like everybody else. But not a major team cup for Orlando. Orlando has not won any major sport cup at all. And this is the make or break. This is the turning point. Either Orlando City becomes the team that every single fan wants to watch that pays their hard-earned money to go to the stadium, or we become literally a meme. I mean, I, I'm sorry that I'm going to be so blunt, but it is true. And no matter how many trolls people can have in the Orlando scene or whatever, or how, how many wannabe skinheads or, or, or people that are, oh, you know, going, yeah, you know, Orlando, that's not going to stop it. We're, we're going to be a meme and, and we're going to have to take it and the only way to come back from being a meme is going to be winning and winning in a in a in a high end fashion um i mean i'm beating streak at home uh i mean things like that the, those now personally i think Orlando has every single tool to in the first half be up three goals i mean orlando has the quality players the organization to be up in the first half three goals easy now it, it's all about this and i really have high confidence in the players that are going to be on the pitch that night that they're going to definitely deliver i don't know if they want to close it well i'm gonna save it because obviously on monday we're gonna have that i'm gonna say because uh, obviously um uh, th these guys know we're gonna have the true legendary a man that need, needs no introduction the legendary Tom Traxler, uh, manager extraordinaire, master tactician, uh, voice of Orlando City for many, many, many years alongside Jeff Ratcliffe. I think uh, it's going to be a show that you shouldn't miss. The girls already had uh, him in their podcast. I had the opportunity to uh, interview him and, uh, and Jeff uh, for, with the, our friends, uh, Orlando Lions, then a few years back at the uh, Oviedo Ale House. Interesting place to record a podcast. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you that uh, at this point, pointless to mention this. If you manage to get your hands on a ticket, which I don't know where, I don't know where, <laughs> uh, you have to be there. Or at the very least, ESPN Plus. Let's That's support right. the boys. I said, I said this a thousand times. Luis has harp been harping on this. 2009, I was in my living room crying myself to sleep after we lost that championship, uh, the Magic against the Lakers. 
Um, the only things that we ever won here was the 2001 uh, minor league hockey uh, with yeah. the oh, Solar with Bears. The Solar Bears. Uh, and uh, and of USL, course, you know, I, USL, I was, USL. Yeah, yeah, USL, USL. The, the last time we lifted a trophy that was worth anything was a regular season championship in 2014 at uh, ESPN Disney World World of Sports. And again, I have I have said this many times. My kids, my boys were toddlers. Now they're teenagers. My oldest son is in high school. Um, it, it, it's been a long time. It's been a long, a long, long, long time. I'm tired of every time that I, I for to find something happy, I had to look back at old pictures of almost a decade ago with obviously, you know, more hair, more black in the, uh, the beard, in the hair. hair, you know, still good looking because I, I, I'm, still, I'm still a handsome man. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is this Wednesday, September 7th, be there to support the boys because we definitely are going to be lifting silverware. You know what I did? Uh, you guys are probably gonna laugh. I, I, you know, I used to you know, college kid and things like that. You know, I was, you know, um, young, and I used to uh, collect, uh, literally collect, because Wild World of Sports used to give you a beer, and used to give you a beer in an ESPN cup, plastic cup, and they always have each game had different colors, like, uh, and because they knew, because they could get free refills. And some it was a dollar fifty refill, something like that. And uh, I collected. I have so many of those cups, dude. All colors. I got red, yellow, orange. I mean, I got the whole rainbow in, in my kitchen. And, and, and the tickets used to have the picture of a different right. player. I have the 2014 and 13 whole rack for like all the home games. Uh, it's like you know, uh, without you know, you know, at the end of the season, obviously they had leftover. Um, like sheets of the tickets, right? Without having to to take them apart. So I had those two. Uh, air, crown jewel of my collection. I have a cool, a bunch of cool stuff. One day we'll probably talk about that. But I'm sorry, Luis, I interrupted. Well, let's let's dive in into what happened, right? The show mania. You know, look at this picture right here. I just want to give uh, a shout out to One A One Creative, to uh, you know my boy uh, George Raymond. Uh, what a fantastic, you know. This is the goal that look at that. Like look at that man. masterpiece. You know? I want I want to print that uh, to cover my whole yeah. wall here in my living room. Uh, that's, uh, that's essentially you know uh, my fanta goodness. a fantastic picture. Um, you know what can I say about Tesho Akinella? I mean, in my opinion, um, underrated. Uh, always underrated. Always look at Chanel's guy. face. Look, he's yeah, just pain. Yeah, he's just, he's. <laughs> You know, but Chanel, Chanel, he had a good game. I mean, he had a good game uh, for, for Col uh, Collins being gone uh, with an injury. He actually hold, hold his ground pretty well. Um, and, you know, Orlando caused a, a, a lot of danger, too, in the first half. Um, let's let's dive in. Um, Emma, what are, what are your thoughts uh, from starters um, out of this game? Uh, how do you see it on the first and then to the second? And obviously, Tesho's goal. Well, before the game, I honestly wasn't feeling that great about playing NYCFC because NYCFC has always been a difficult team for us to play against. So that was a scary thought at the beginning. But then we started to play and we were actually creating a lot of opportunities up top, which I was very happy to see because sometimes Orlando struggles with that, especially on counterattacks. But the problem Orlando has had is not finishing so we can create like a perfect golden opportunity, but we just can't finish it for whatever reason it is. And so we continued with that throughout the first half. And obviously NYCFC obviously had their own opportunities too. But then NYCFC came out like strong, like at the beginning of the second half. But then once we saw like Cesar Araujo and um, Andreas Perea and our subs come in, the game was able to change in the second half and we were able to like calm down and keep our tempo going and then end up seeing Tesho score in the extra time, which was crazy to see again. Like, whoa. <laughs> no, that's right. Um, and, you know, just look at this picture, man. Look at the people. Like, the people right here. Like, that are, will look, and, and not only that, like, look at the security. <laughs> the security guards are like, 
like static, just like the my fans. man. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, Angulo. I'm gonna say this. You know, a lot of people question his signing uh, about Ivan Angulo. He has a he's very good at set pieces, and if that's gonna be his contribution to the team, I'll let him have any corner, any corner kick. Let him any, be. Yeah, any yeah, any set piece. Um, here you go, Ivan. Go at it, my friend. Like honestly. Um, um, have have the half Tesha's goal was his, in my opinion, um, with the assist. And uh, again, guys, let's let's think about this. He's not Messi. He's not Di Maria. He, he's 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 Ivan Angulo. Uh, and and we need to calm down. I, I've seen a lot of people on Facebook saying we need to start him over you know certain players. Let's just. I, I believe that Oscar knew when to put the substitutions on this game. I think a lot of people said it also. Oscar's subs worked on this game. And I with that, I, I go to Casey. Um, how were your uh, how are your thoughts on, on this particular game and and especially on Oscar's um, system and how do you see it? Um, I think during this game we came off really strong in the beginning, you know, with like the early goal and just overall, I loved our play in the first half. Um, but towards the like the beginning and the middle of the second half, we kind of start. It kind of started to like die down a little bit. We we weren't. I wasn't seeing much of that energy that we usually see like with Orlando, you know. Um, but then the end of that game was just crazy. Like I was I was sitting there watching with my dad, and we were like, "Man, the the things we would do to be there right now. Like that just looks like such a fun game to be at." Um, but with Oscar substitutions. Usually, um, when I'm watching a game, I'm like, in the middle of the second half, ish. I'm like, okay, it's time for a substitution for a change. We need some more energy. But this game, he got it right on point. Like he subbed in the perfect players, especially Tesho, and at the perfect time, and it just it changed the game. And I just think um, his substitutions this game were definitely really good. How do you see it, Dave? I gotta make it quick. Um, you guys remember that one of our sources had said that the locker room was in disarray. Uh, players were angry at each other, angry at Pareja. Pareja literally had lost control of what was going on. It was a, a really dark side of um, of our season. People openly arguing with each other on the pitch. Um, and um, that source told us that our captain, Mauricio Pereira, uh, called up called for a meeting uh, with the staff and with all the players. It was one of those, uh, you know, let's just talk it out, just like guys do, you know, closed doors. What happened in there, I was not told because, uh, you know, nobody talked about what was, what was said. But all I have to say is that the players left with the understanding that they're going to go out there and play for their manager. Uh, and play for the club, play for the fans. Uh, Oscar Pare has, has always been a manager that uh, that says, hey, you know, we got to have great performances for the people that pay top dollar. Um, Sunday, a lot of people have to work the next day, have to go to school. It was raining. People were getting wet. Uh, and nobody went home. And that's and that's the beauty of our fan base. We understand uh, if we're going to if you're going to play games in Florida, this is going to happen this time of the year. And people go to the stadium with the understanding that, Hey, things things may happen. That said, um, I want to say that while I have said that if Oscar Pareja was going to be inflexible, was going to insist on uh, tactics that uh, were not working, that perhaps it was time to to look somewhere else. Uh, I never attack his character or or the person that he is. Who I, I think he's a fantastic individual. I had the pleasure to talk to him twice already. Uh, and uh, what well, we have seen that he he, you know, admitted that some of the things that he was doing were were not uh, conducive to points. Change them. The subs on point. Uh, our friend um, Mike Ramajo said that they had no plans of playing uh, Cesar Araujo this yeah, past uh, Sunday, and the manager said, uh, "Profe, I want I want I want in." Yeah. Came in, changed the dynamic in the midfield. Um, and, and, and for that, I, I am so thankful that this guy is here. He, he plays like, you know, it, 
while Europe is a possibility for him, he, he doesn't play for that. He plays because he's an Orlando City player right now, and uh, he he's loving life here in the city. Him and and, and his girlfriend, they are they they're enjoying every second of it, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, and Tosha uh, Kindele, a player that quite honestly has been the uh, anybody that went to Pines with Pareja knows. Anybody that went to the uh, the the season ticket members meetings with uh, Jared Dillon knows that a lot of people on the wall, okay, on the wall, were very, very critical of him. Very critical of him. Uh, Tesho is a humble guy. Had the opportunity to talk to him many, many times. Tesho is who he is. He's a journeyman. He's going to come and give you everything he's got. Uh, and unfortunately, because he has the tag of a forward, number nine, whatever you want to call him, people think that he has to score double-digit goals every single season. That's not the case. He only has two goals. But what two goals, my friends? Um, game winners. In this one, uh, three points that we really needed. And uh, a game changer, the guy, instead of uh, telling people, hey, I shut up the haters or not, anything like that, he just praised his manager and praised his teammates. And that's, uh, that's the type of humbleness I would love to have. Because I'm not. I'm, I'm, you know, everybody knows I, I'm, I'm full of pride and uh, uh, I'm petty. But uh, thank God, Tesha Kindele is not like before, that. Uh, before we go into the, the comments, just keep leaving your comments, your questions. Uh, we're going to go to Paola. Uh, Paola, what were your thoughts uh, uh, of the win, you know, and uh, Tesha's goal and, and how it came about? First half, second half, what were your thoughts? So completely different energy from the last game home that we play against New England Revolution completely differently energized i think and i believe if it wasn't because of the rain we would have scored at least two goals in the first half that rain screw us up a little bit and i was so scared that we were gonna get injured but thank god we didn't because that rain was like oh but anyways um that banger from Urso, assist from Facu, I believe it's number eight from Facundo, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Angulo, like I, I like what I, I saw from Angulo. Um, even he stopped uh, almost, not a goal, but uh, an attacking play from New York uh, player yeah, that he... he and, and I was like, oh, my God, he, here, here it is, here it is. And he slide, a clean slide tackle for a New York player and he slide step up and he ran to to our to our um um side so I was like yes yes please come keep it going and then that perfect corner kick because Tesha did his job yes but yeah. Angulo did his job too like both of them like it was perfect, perfect, perfect. I posted a, a video in our Tiro de Esquina podcast, Twitter. We were jumping in the stands. Te show, te show. Because we couldn't believe it. Um, behind us, there were New York City fans. And they were like, hey, good game. They were high-fiving us. It was a good game. And like um, David said, um, Cesar Araujo came in. And people were like, um, around us, they were like, oh, what Pareja's doing? Oh, taking out Cara and putting Cesar. I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, are you guys coaches? Let him do his job. Like, come on, like, let him be. We're tied. And Cesar Ajujo, he's like a mid defender. Let him do his job. And boom, thank God. Techo for the win. He's in a hot streak right now and we won. So, I like the energy. We're in a momentum right now. Um, let's see what, what the boys come on Wednesday. So I we probably see a different lineup for Wednesday. So let's yeah, see. We'll, yeah, we will dive in into the lineup for, for Seattle. Yes, if, uh, if, if you allow me to interrupt you before you go to the, uh, to the comments, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, question for everybody. I don't know if you guys saw that uh, the video that was on Twitter. Uh, it was uh, made by uh, by a uh, Orlando City fan, and and Luis, I sent it to you. Uh, it's basically uh, it's a at BW or oh, copyright. Okay, at BW underscore ignite, 
And basically, it, he uh, uses the the commercial that Sean Johnson had for uh, for the for the Firestone, I believe it was, uh, where he's like freeze frame, and he's like, I know exactly where this guy is gonna go. And then we cut from the commercial to the actual footage of the game <laughs> with special scoring, and, and it was lovely. And and, and uh, uh, yeah, Angulo, that that goal doesn't happen without Angulo. So, sure. so funny thing, guys, I have seen that corner kick like for 10 times and I screenshot this. Like, this is so funny. This is a meme right here. This That's is golden. This is golden. Blog. That is the thumbnail for, thumbnail for my latest <laughs> vlog. Yeah, the, I mean, Sean, I have my respect to UCF, uh, but I mean, either way, like it is, it is kind of hilarious that, you know, uh, we had this history and this beef with that uh, NYCFC. Because I mean, in a way, even though there's no um, promotion or, the, or um, demotion in the in the MLS, uh, Orlando came from USL. Uh, we were built, uh, not necessarily bought. So I think that concept is the main trigger for the arguments between NYCFC and Orlando fans. So uh, it was a great victory for sure. Let's read some comments here. Mike V says, "Paula is amazing." Much love from Chile, Gracie, and Michael. There you go. Uh, Paola, are you going to say hello? Hey, Mike. There you go. Jim D, how about Antonio Carlos's red card? I nearly lost my crap. Criminal. Sorry. Criminal. That wasn't even a yellow, by the way. You know, yeah. it, 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 was, it was insane. I don't know where, I don't know what M or Casey thought about it, but I, I saw, you know, first and foremost, how is VAR like right in front of the fans? Because the fans are just like yelling. They're like, what the hell, man? The, the ref belongs to no BT, man. The ref belongs to no BT. And like, you know, like I, I can't, I was laughing, honestly, because the ref is just like looking down. It's like, <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to watch this. Like, don't talk to me. It was funny. I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts about the AC's red card, uh, Emma? Let's start with you. So when I first saw it like happen like on TV, I was so confused because I didn't know like what happened. Like it came out of nowhere. Like why is Antonio getting a red card? Like where does this come fr from? And then they replayed it and you're watching it and you're like, how is that even a yellow? Like how, how is that even a card? Like he just like stepped on the foot and he still touched the ball. So like I'm glad VAR was at like, I'm glad VAR worked in our favor this game because also with the first goal, that – I'm so glad VAR worked because that goal was not offsides. Kara was perfectly in line with the defender, yeah, that's right. and Ursa was definitely not offsides. So I'm glad VAR worked for us in this last game. Now Antonio red card or red card that became a yellow card should not have even been a card. Yeah, I mean it was not intentional. What were your thoughts there, Casey? When I when I first saw it, like just like Emma said, like on TV, I was like, did he? What did? Antonio would even get a red card for like what do you even get a card for there <laughs> and when they replayed it I was like okay like he he stepped on his foot but like he didn't use excessive force he didn't punch him in the face or anything like he, <laughs> he just kind of stepped on his foot and I mean like I get where maybe some refs would say that's a yellow like I don't think it was at all, supposed to be at all but like just why was that even a card? Like the ref didn't even hesitate at all when he just pulled out the red card. I'm like, where'd you get that from? That's right. That's right. Let's read some more comments. Citrus FC. I gotta say, I love Paula's perspective and thoughts. Thoughts each week. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I got you some got, fans tonight. Yeah, I know you got a. <laughs> don't start, no, please. Don't just, start. <laughs> Mike, Mike B. Mike B. This is two goals. But six effing points. Vamos. There you go. Chase Maguire. Talking about Pareja. People say that inconsistency is his fault and we should fire him. But they don't realize where we were before he got there. I know that. That's yeah. why, That's why. honestly, I couldn't pay the season ticket holding pass anymore. Um, I, I'll be completely honest. I, I, I just... I didn't see any progress whatsoever um, with the team. I lost complete hope. That's why I kind of understand uh, some of the fans uh, on that perspective. And I don't judge their their character on, on that point. But 
I think he is turning around this boat and hopefully after Pato's loss, you know, because, you know, his presence in the locker room, uh, and I can say this uh, because I've seen it, um, is very important in the locker room, Pato's um, presence and um, him being, you know, kind of gone, at, uh, you know, to do his rehab in, in Brazil for his for his uh, injury. Um, hopefully, I, you can definitely tell it, it didn't affect so much. Um, I think people got back up working and, and try to get this game on the road. So, um, you know, great work ethic from from the Lions and, and Oscar Pareja, right? Crazy mush. Not enough people are talking about um, Angulo's performance. Really, day and night when he came in for came on for Jake. That's right, right? I think we all agree on that. See, Citrus FC, Angula was a perfect sub. I was very impressed with his work rate in the final minutes. Joshua Tall, he says, it's so awesome seeing Tesho score again and for the win. Ahmed Salim, I want to say hello to Ahmed Salim. Three-point Tesho. Yes, and, and I, I met uh, Ahmed uh, in Section 33 this past uh, yesterday. Uh, so, Ahmed, thank you. Thank you for the words, man. I, you know, when you guys say hello to us in the stadium, uh, it means the world to us because, again, uh, and, and Eman Casey knows this, uh, you know, you do this for free, for the love of the game, for the love of the club. You expect nothing back. And so when, when people tell you, hey, great job, I listen, I take t an hour of my day, an hour and 30 minutes for us, right, to to watch you guys or to, to listen, that, that, that means the world to us. And, and again, you know, we're in this together. Uh, we got to put our differences to the side and concentrate on what matters, which is right. supporting our club. Uh, Connor, no soccer live. Um, my crew fan here. Uh, the red card um, to yellow card confused me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we were all confused too. Uh, personally, at the press box, I was like, this is this is hilarious. This is yellow card was to save face. Yeah, it, it was just to save face. You know, uh, pro referees. Yay! Uh, hopefully... Uh, they don't get uh, 2026. I hope they really get trained. Either they get trained or because you cannot officiate World Cup uh, with the pro referees. I, I do want to say this. Uh, I, you know, even though, yes, the refereeing worked in our favor in this game, uh, I think the, the league needs to revise uh, pro referees uh, on how they're going to officiate the major, major, sporting, major sport event for the sport. In the world so that's um, an episode on its own my friend and definitely connor if you're a crew fan and you have your podcast and you will like to come in for a preview once we face each other at some point you're more than welcome the line's completely open for you just dm us on instagram at lpo underscore podcast or loud and proud orlando or twitter as well and then we'll make it happen my friend thank you so much for watching Citrus FC, fifth, maybe fourth, if we can catch them. But either way, I don't see much higher than that. It says Citrus on Orlando's standings, right? Um, Joshua Tall, I was glad they overturned the red red card to a yellow card. That's right. That's right. All right. So let's uh, – we have one more question for uh, a fan as well. And I think this is going to introduce uh, some of the – dive in into the details of the win against NYCFC. It's Eric Shrum, and I want to um, say hello to him. I, I know he's listening right now. Uh, he's probably at work. And he says, can't watch the show live tonight, but I wanted to submit a question ahead of time and get your thoughts on this formation. Uh, Faku shine at the 10 last night, and seems like Poppy is starting to get the formation keyed in. Um, so he puts a 4-2-3-1 formation with uh, Galese as the number one. Moutinho, Jensen, if, if fit, he puts there. AC, Ruan, Arau Juan Pereira right here. And then Angulo, Torres, Urso, and then Cara right up top or Tesho. Um, I'm going to start and then I'm going to pass the ball around and see where you guys feel that we make some changes personally. Um, if Jansen is fit, I will keep him there with Carlos, but we already know that Rodrigo's working fine. So, I mean, against Seattle, I will save Jansen for the, for the championship, in my opinion. I'll, I will save Jansen for um, U.S. Open Cup, in my opinion. Um, then um, I don't see Pereira playing. I mean, I know he can play. Uh, as a six, but I will probably would have switched the roles here, and 
Um, against Seattle, I will also probably save Cesar Araujo. I would probably go with the mid that started um, against um, NYCFC. So I will probably do um, Cartagena and Urso right there with Facundo Torres right as a number 10, which I think he worked fine. I think we we'll also need Pereira for the U.S. Open Cup. We need him fit uh, for that game. And if we have to wait one more game, you know, um, I will say just rest him personally. Uh, then we have Angulo, Torres, and Urso. Um, I mean, Urso in this position, he's also really good because he keeps switching sides with Torres. But personally, um, you know, Angulo, I don't know if he's – personally, I would like to see Benji – on the right, uh, maybe, you know, a, a different Mulraney. I will keep the same uh, – personally, I will keep the lineup for NYCFC, if you, if you ask me. Um, I think Angulo is coming great as a sub, and I think he can make a difference. And then right up top, <clears throat> yes, Tesho is scoring back-to-back -back games, but we know that Tesho is a player that – but it has – a purpose to hold up the ball, uh, recuperate the ball, trying to go in transition, trying to find a, a, a association um, right up top, and he's not so much of a scorer. And uh, I will go for Kara at this point, uh, and then maybe have Tesho be subbed in. Um, that that'll be my opinion. I don't know what um, Emma thinks about the the lineup that the, the gentleman sent out. So, for the back line. The whole thing with the lineup that we should have for Seattle, it's difficult because we do have the cup game upcoming. So we do right. want to try and rest players and make sure they're fit and healthy to play for that open cup game. So I think Schlegel should start either way, even if Janssen is fit enough. You want him yeah. to be fully fit so then he can play in that final. I like Cesar. Cesar should play. Like Cesar's an amazing center defensive midfielder. Like yeah. for his age, too, it's crazy. Um, Mauricio, I like him at the eight, kind of. Like, I'm used to him playing the 10, and he's one of the reasons why I started playing attacking mid myself. Ooh, but wow. him playing as, like, the number eight, I think kind of works out, <laughs> especially when you have, like, when you don't have um, – oh, my gosh, I can't think right now. But <laughs> Torres at the 10, too. I like Torres because – a lot of his goals happen from outside the box and low on the ground into a corner. That's one of the things that has blown my mind is his outside the box, low into the, into the corner shots. And he can like find small little openings and passes, make runs right. in the middle and stuff and make those passes and shoot. And he's also, I've seen his confidence grow a lot more through like as the season has progressed because at the beginning, it was like, oh, yay, we have a new exciting player. But he wasn't really doing a lot for Orlando. But then in July, he started scoring a lot more. He started assisting a lot more. And he had a great, like, month for July. I like Ursa out on the wing, too, personally, better than, like, him playing at the eight. Because he, like, he, as you saw, he's scoring more on the, like, on the outside position. Right. He's had two or three goals in the last month playing at, on the wing. And he can also make – he's been able to connect a lot better on the um, outside wing. And then with Angulo, there's some – and it's the same with Tesho too. I feel there's some players that are better as substitutes than starting. Like Benji, for example. he When he right. comes onto the field, he'll bring energy. That, like So, like, Tesho and Benji are two examples I like to use as, like, being better as subs than starting. Because sometimes the players, like, at the beginning of the game, they can't, like – bring anything but then they start but once you throw them on the field as a substitute they have all the energy that you need to perform and score goals so on the outside Mulraney's a good option but I also I don't know how old Nico is with the like boys yet because I know he's new but I really want to try and see Nico playing a little bit more with the team and yeah. then up top I do Kara um, I mean, I, I agree on, on your analysis there. Um, I think uh, Angulo and, and Tesho coming from the bench would be the best bet, I think, for Orlando City. Uh, what are your thoughts, Casey, uh, regarding of, of, uh, of this question that we have from a listener? Are you there? 
Yeah. I I think she's froze. Yeah, I think she froze. Yeah, there we go. She'll yeah, be back. She tends to have Wi-Fi issues. <laughs> I, I, same here. Well, I, I'll jump. I, I'll jump in there while the KC comes back on. Um, all I have to say, uh, I mean, fantastic analysis from the both of you. Uh, I just like we said, I, I will go with what we started with uh, against NYC. Um, Kara is a DP. I, I will play him until the wheels come off. Uh, just like uh, Emma said, uh, Tesho, Tesho is, a, is a super sub. You know, that guy comes. Uh, I, I call him Mr. 80th Minute because he comes in. And, uh, and, and I mean, he, he, he's a closer. He's a closer. What happened? And uh, our friend Nick, uh, who can be found as uh, at PJ No on Twitter, mentioned this that uh and and, and i quote uh and it wasn't just a game winner tesho and angulo were in sync and cesar araujo is a beast so uh that's that's another thing if angulo and uh, tesho are working uh you know they they they, they have that understanding I, I i will do the same i'll just bring him uh to close the game uh that uh, corner kick uh this past uh this la last night sunday was the uh the the soccer equivalent the football equivalent of bases loaded and a home run in baseball i mean we just we just left them on the pitch literally looking at each other dumbfounded so that's that, that's what i would do um i would like to uh, be honest with you i will say for, uh, Pereira too if, if possible i think uh, what we have going on uh next uh wednesday is more important um you know getting a tie against uh, seattle who's a western team is not such a bad outcome uh obviously uh, uh, i want the boys to go for the win but uh, but again, uh, at this point, we have to balance what we have in front of us uh, versus the reward of getting that CONCACAF uh, berth and also uh, lift silverware. That's right. Uh, Paola, um, I don't know if you're there. Oh, we lost um, again? Yep. I don't know if, yep. if I will jump in. Um, I agree. I would like to see the same NYCSC format, but I would like to see Faku to have like take take him out um earlier on this game and, and Urso. I don't want anybody to get injured because of the final game um next week. Um I would like to a win if it's a tied, if a tied. If it's a loss, I don't I don't like lost it, right? I, I, I like to win points, but um, but neither. I don't like to see any injuries. But um, we talk about um, in our last podcast that Cartagena was going to was gonna um, start. And we see it, Luis. We saw it on, on the last um, uh, starting lineup. He, he started. He played really good. And we might see him again on Wednesday um, for, for against Seattle. And I like how he played. Um, and I believe, like I said, because of the range, Kara should have had like a, a, a goal. So let's see how they played um, on Wednesday. Faku should have had another assist there. Um, and Faku and Urso should like get out on the on the pitch earlier for Wednesday. And important to mention now, uh, that that Tesho scored with OCV, so it's three games in a row. Yeah, he he's in a hot streak right now. So all right, right. and uh, I want to go ahead and uh, just kind of give a little bit of uh, an assessment here. This is the lineup that, that went on the field, uh, and this is NYCFC NYCFC's lineup. Um, when it comes to win the Cartagena, uh, a lot of people are saying that it was an impressive blah 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 blah. blah. You know that they are. You know they probably play like Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. You know um, I'm sure, um, but this is the reason why Wilder couldn't stop Maxi Morales because this is the the, the, the what I want to just kind of because I've I've covered the Peruvian national team and I know how he plays. Number one, the position that he played yesterday is the position that he excels the most. Um, that's I want to start with that. The thing is, he had as a partner Junior Urso, and he was going on the attack more. And Maxi Morales, uh, the way he excels the most is to have a solid six, like a solid defensive-minded six that does not go into the attack. So who's that six? 
that will be Cesar Araujo. If you put him maybe with Cesar, you're going to see Wilder being more of like a number eight, which is his position, uh, ideally. And that's when you will see him, yes, play defensively, like you did him the first couple of minutes of the game. But when a dynamic player like Maxi Morales, he is going to push you, you know, uh, a little harder. And you got to look for help on, in, in, in the mid. And Urso was doing the back and forth uh, on that on that wing as well. So um, maybe for Seattle we can try Cesar and Cartagena right there in the mid, and maybe Urso as a as a right wing. I think uh, that would be great. And I think definitely against. I mean, Joao Paulo is not going to be playing for Seattle, but they have other uh, great players. And then there's one guy called Raúl Ruiz Díaz. And uh, Rui Diaz is, is, is a player that is a dangerous uh, threat. So um, that would be my assessment. Now, he, he's getting better. So um, it's the first couple of games. I wouldn't just say, hey, let's cut him. Hey, we don't need him. You know, I think um, he's going to help and he's going to improve. Uh, another player, I, I don't know what are your thoughts, uh, phenomenal player from Junior Urso. Um, I think he was... Um, like Emma was saying, you know, he was eating out that right wing. He was, uh, I think, more poised to be a right winger than uh, playing in his actual position. So maybe Oscar needs to look into that a little bit more. I don't know, you know. So I don't know. Um, that's fine. Uh, I don't know. What are your anybody have closing thoughts, Dave? Anything you want to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, Casey, if you can hear us, um, I don't know if. Um, you will. Oh, there it is. Oh, she's gone now. All right. So, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, to build on what everybody said, yeah, I think you know some, some trouble the internet. Okay, great. Um, that, that's too bad. Uh, the um, uh, I think the guys uh, are showing uh, a little bit more out of their portfolio, out of their weapons. I think uh, you know. I think what we have learned, and hopefully. Uh, people will, will agree with me, is that our system shouldn't be rigid, should be organic, should should take the shape of the um, of the the, 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 the game. Uh, we, uh, I think a lot of people have said this on, on social media, that we tend to play to, to the opponent's uh, talent level at times. And, uh, you know, I think uh, this year, uh, you know, things that need to be questioned is, you know, Losing two games against DC United, which it's one of the worst teams out there. Losing games against uh, Cincinnati, uh, how we had uh, those points in our pocket. The story will be much different right now. Uh, traditionally, 50 points guarantee you a place in the playoffs. Uh, right now, we are at 39, so we are 11 points away from that uh, that uh, threshold, that watermark. And uh, we have. Uh, Four games left at home, counting Wednesday. Four games left at home. Uh, so, and that's not obviously not counting uh, the the final. So, my friends, you know, it uh, we are down to the nitty gritty, and uh, and it's time to uh, tie out the seatbelt. Every point, every goal matters. One of the, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Alexi Lala said last night, and I disagree with Alexi Lala's on what color uh the what what's the color <laughs> in the clouds uh he said that that at this point he may go down to goal differential for that seventh spot so for us it, it, you know we gotta score we gotta limit uh, our opponent's uh, uh scoring ability and on top of that we have to we have to get points because uh i don't want a repeat like last year where we fought basically uh, found ourselves um, in uh, in danger of being left off, and I see that case is back. I think we lost Luis now, but but Casey, what do you think about the uh, for the formation for for um, Wednesday game against Seattle? What do you think it should be? Um, I think. We should. I really liked what we did with NYCFC with the lineup and stuff. Um, I think we do need to rest some key players for the Open Cup game, like Mauricio and Cesar, and 
just key players. We need to, but we need to play it safe too, because at this point in the MLS, I don't think we can risk um, dropping more points on games that we should be winning or at least tying, you know, we need points to stay above the playoff line and to make the playoffs. So it's like kind of going back and forth. What do you do? I think with the back line, I think we re- we still rest Janssen, even though, even if he is fit, I think Schlegel back there is still like completely solid. Um, within the midfield, I really like seeing Urso on the wing and um, Angulo also during this game. Um, I think with Mauricio, he was on yellow card suspension, and I think it would be good to have him back, but I also feel like we are really going to need him for the Open Cup game. And then up top, I mean, either, like we were like saying earlier, like either Tesho or Kara. Tesho, of course, scored those two really good late game winners, but e- either one, honestly, like I'd be, I'd be satisfied with both. Uh, to close uh, to close in into you know this 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 fantastic win for Orlando City, we want to dive in into what's coming next, and that'll be um, Seattle Sounders, right? And um, we're gonna do the the lineup that we think maybe it would work. Um, you know, we're gonna dive in into that in just a moment. But um, here's the lineup for you know for um, the Seattle Sounders, right? Um, from my understanding. And I'm going to say right now, they're going to repeat the same lineup to play against uh, Portland. That's for, for what I've heard and sources have told me. So they're going to try to work on keeping the same lineup uh, because for them, they are playing not to, they're playing for playoffs too. So they, if, if Orlando lose, if Orlando beats them, they are one step behind on, in the hunt for the playoffs too. So um, uh, weak points for this, for this uh, squad for me, uh, not having Joao Paulo. I think um, um, Danny Leiva, even though everybody likes him and he's a young player and blah, blah, blah. He commit, he commits a lot of unnecessary fouling. Arriaga to me, it's a center back that has never, uh, I think we have the best center back duo right there. They're playing um, on a three, you know, um, with three defenders, right? With Yeymar, uh, Know-How, and also Arriaga. I think Arriaga, to me, is the weakest link of them two, of them three here. And uh, I think the key player in this lineup, to me, are going to be the connection between these three, right? Jordan Morris being a threat um, on the wing, as well as Nico Lodeiro and Raul Ruiz Diaz. Um, now, how do you... St- stop Ruidias and how do you stop Ladero? You got to have players that are going to have a poise to recoup the ball without fouling them. And uh, because they're going to be looking for that set piece, uh, especially Ruidias. That's that's what he does. He's going to fall. He's not trying to look for a penalty kick. Um, and uh, you got to have uh, a little bit of a of poise and, and just know when to stop him and control his tempo. When, when you do that, he won't score. Uh, he's one of the – he has the worst scoring record in the, na- in the Peruvian national team. Uh, people actually in Peru do not like Raul Ruiz, believe it or not, uh, the side of Seattle fans. He, he's the star in Seattle. He's not liked in Peru. And uh, it's because of his lack of scoring because defenders in South America are just a little better. I mean, that's just uh, – that's completely honest, um, honesty. And uh, Nicolo Dedo, he's always been the – he's the X factor. But we're going to be – I love this. Sh- it would be great to see the showdown between Pereira and Lodero. I think it would be fit phenomenal. I think it would be for the, you know, a great duel. But I agree with Casey in this point that I think we need to sub. I think we need to wait on Pereira because he get, you know, he's got so much threat on the tires, right, Pereira? And I think if he – gets rested and we get him 90 minutes against Sacramento, I think that would be probably beneficial for Orlando. I don't know, um, Dave, what are your thoughts coming up for Seattle? Um, unless you want to just dive in into 
who what players would you like to put in uh, for this? Game? Well, you know, uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, all I gotta say is uh, they're they're coming cross country on a Wednesday. We may have rain uh, that day, so conditions may be as tough as they were last night. Uh, but at the same time, we have never been able to defeat them. Uh, we have been able to tie with them uh, uh, two, twice, I believe. But, uh, you know, the first time we met them in 2015, it, it, they gave us a goleada. I think it was like a 5-0 in their, in their, in their house. Uh, so with that said, not for nothing, you got to respect, respect the ranks. They are the CONCACAF champion. And the reason why they are having issues making the playoffs, obviously, is because they they went all in, uh, trying to uh, trying to um, win that championship. Uh, they have been in several uh, finals in the last five six years. They have won the MLS Cup uh, twice. They have won Open Cups uh, at least three times. Uh, so, at the end of the day, I mean, this is this is a team that you have to emulate they have never missed the playoffs in their in their whole existence existence in mls so they're not going to come here to do us any favors and in their case they are in the hunt to get into the above the red line so i expect them to come in play us hard um they are not playing for anything right now just making playoffs so they're gonna come uh you know both to the wall as uh to use that military aeronautical term uh, and, and they're just not going to give us uh, – they're, they're not going to here to do do charity. They, they're going to play us hard. Um, what are your thoughts, Paula? Same as David. Um, they haven't been consistent as they were. Um, I have been following them lately because they get more TV, um, you know, broadcasting than, than us, right? And they just lost against the Portland Timbers. So we have to take that advantage. But like David said, they are not coming with good intentions and we have to be careful because we have a final next week. Um, but at the same time, like Casey said, we are in a, in a difficult spot that we cannot lose point. Um, that we especially need to, exactly, especially at home, we have to maintain a playoff spot. And right now, the Eastern Conference is tight. It's still tight. Even though that we won yesterday, we're in a tight position. So hopefully we get even a point or three point. That will be marvelous. So we can end up August with 12 points. No, more. Yeah, 12 points. So let's, let's end up the right way so we can get that trophy, that cup, next Wednesday. But I agree with this format, so, so this formation. I just, got, I, I just got your text, Paul. <laughs> it made me laugh. Uh, <laughs> all right. So um, this is, uh, I mean, I would put this 11 on the field. I think we need to win every game at home. Now, there could be some changes uh, that it could be made, and that's a discussion that we're about to have. I would love to see Cartagena and Araujo right there up mid. I would love to see Urso. Now, uh, from my understanding and what I've heard is that they want to give Araujo the day, but, again, Araujo insisted to play uh, against NYCFC. So, but I would like to see these three, right? Cartagena, Araujo, and Urso. Cartagena playing his actual position, the one he plays and excels at. He excelled in, Go in Godoy Cruz. He was a captain, 20-some uh, years old. Uh, what brought him to the Peruvian national team was playing that number eight, straight number eight spot, um, being the second fiddle to Pedro Aquino, who plays in Club America. And then you have uh, Cesar Araujo, which I think, you know, he played a phenomenal game against NYCFC. And then you have the freedom of Facundo Torres right there in the, in the you know, below the, um, right behind the number nine, which is, will be Urgent Cara, and then Jake Moraney right on, on the left wing. Um, Emma, what, what are your your thoughts? Would you make any changes uh, to the lineup? Uh, do, you, do you feel like maybe we should play with more subs? More, You know, what are your thoughts? I like the addition of Kyle Smith because Motinho is known to like get hurt easily sometimes and like it can take a while for him to bounce back from those injuries. And I think Kyle's actually a very good player to put on this lineup. 
Um, I like the three midfielders because that means Mauricio gets a break. And as Casey mentioned, we definitely probably need to rest him because Mauricio is the player, ma- like the playmaker on the field. Like he's the one that's serve- serving the balls and also sometimes scoring goals. So I think that's a good, the midfield's a great choice. Um, I like Ruan on the wing. And I do like Schlegel and Antonio at center back, or not, not Ruan on the wing, but at the like outside back. Antonio and Schlegel at the center backs. Um, Mulraney's a solid choice at the wing. I think Benji's also a good choice there too. Kara's good choice at striker, and Ursa's a great choice at the right wing. Fantastic. What about you, Casey? What are your thoughts? I think that this lineup, I feel like it's a really good mix of like starters and um, players we would normally see coming on as subs. Um, just as Emma said, Kyle Smith, um, he's he's an amazing. I think he's an amazing outside back too. Um, and Moutinho, I love Moutinho, but I think we he has such an a. a how do I say this? Like a presence coming forward, like just like him and Ruan, like the outside backs in Orlando. I feel like lately I've had a presence coming forward and like helping support the attack a lot, like with crosses and making overlaps and runs. But I think Kyle Smith is a really good addition in there. And then with the midfield, uh, I like how um, Torres is at the, the 10 again, because in the NYCFC game, I think he did really good there, like making plays and finding space and stuff and just playing combinations with the wings and stuff and getting forward. And this is a game that I feel like we need to either win or tie because of, you know, where we are in the play in the standings, in the playoff standings. Um, I like Mulraney there. And just as Emma said, I think Benji could be there easily too. Um, and Kara is a good choice and or so, yes. And the center backs, the, yeah, those are two I would choose. Fantastic. Uh, what about you, Paola? Would you would you change anything? No. Would... We need to play more rainy there because he cannot play next Wednesday, unfortunately. So I like it. Uh, yeah. Um, and probably we're gonna see the super subs at the 80th minute, like David said. So let's see. There you go, um, Dave. Uh, anything else you want to add on this? Uh... 11 against the Sounders, possible 11? No, I don't I don't think we – I mean, we have covered everything. We got to win. That's it. We got to win. You can't show up. I know it's a school night at work, but go show up, support the, uh, support the Lions. And, of course, you know, I can say that because I live 10 minutes away from the stadium. Uh, so, to me, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's nothing Love big. Me, but I will be there. That right. I will be there. There you go. See? You, lady, you know what to do. Uh, so I, uh, I expect to be there, and uh, yeah, you know, let's 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 hope that the boys, you know, can do something, uh, be inspired, and uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm gonna be quite honest with you guys. I, I'm perfectly okay with a with a tie um, because we have bigger fish to fry the following Wednesday. So with that said, uh, I guess we can uh, go and, and and wrap this up. Right, and uh, before we go, I want to go ahead and um, show this right here, um, which is making a lot of noise um, recently. And I would have loved to see this happen, but you know, uh, because it's just just to kind of you know laugh a little bit, you know. Um, look at this right here: the new Argentina jersey for the World Cup, the new away kit. It's purple. And, I love it. Uh, you know, they already started putting, you know, the Orlando City crest uh, down south, you know, saying that Orlando, Julian Alvarez to Orlando City confirmed. He there was rumored uh, to be here too, right? In a few right. years ago? So, yeah, yeah. This this past, um, past transfer window, he was rumored, yeah. Um, so, I just think it's funny um, how, you know, their away jersey for the World Cup of Argentina is going to be purple, fully purple, and the three actually tonalities of purple. And uh, people in Argentina are saying, <laughs> uh, you know, it looks like Orlando City's uh, is pulling strings to try to lure Julian Alvarez if he doesn't get minutes in the in Manchester City. So uh, I just thought that was something hilarious that I saw online. So uh, 
but um, I'm definitely will probably buy the kit. You know, it, it looks pretty nice in my opinion. I, I like the three tonalities of purple. He looks nice I'm... in purple, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. Papi chulo, papi chulo. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, anyways, uh, Dave, what are your thoughts? Julian Alvarez to Orlando City confirmed. I will pick him up at the airport. You guys know I like to go to the airport to receive our new, uh, our new, our new players. So absolutely, let's do that. Um, before we go, obviously, uh, I would like to thank uh, Emma and Casey, who on a school night had decided to uh, spend an hour and 30 minutes. 90 minutes. 90 minutes about the game of 90 minutes uh, with us. Uh, I, again, uh, uh, girls, I, I, I enjoy your, your podcast. I listen to it. Uh, Everybody here knows our our, our listeners. I, I I work as a field service technician, so I'm driving all over uh, Florida. I have plenty of windshield time, and uh, I listen to everyone. Uh, and uh, I enjoy your podcast; very informative. So, if you guys are uh, out there and you want to uh, learn a few things, few things, few new things, uh, give give the girls a, a, an opportunity. Uh, also, I want to say that tonight, unfortunately, uh, Orlando City B, uh, uh, the game ended uh, two goals apiece. Our newest signing to OCV with the brace. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to uh, snatch that extra point in penalties. But that's how football is, cruel and unpredictable. Uh, and um, if I can flex... About all the other clubs that I follow, Maccabi Haifa is going to be with the Group H. Uh, that's uh, for the, the UEFA champions. Uh, first time an Israeli team has reached this level. Um, so, Yala Maccabi. There you go. That's, uh, go Maccabi. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, PSG, Juventus, He's and Benfica. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know what you say. I'm just trying to run up because I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> uh, PSG, Juventus, and uh, Benfica are going to be in, in, in that group. Uh, uh, Stevenage is in play of contention. Fortunately, uh, first uh, defeat of the year. And one thing that uh, that I was asked, uh, welcome to Wrexham, that documentary. I recommend anybody, please go watch it. Uh, lower league football uh, in the English uh, system, uh, fifth division, uh, the National League, uh, in my opinion, and a lot of people will agree with me, the hardest football league to get out of. Only two teams get promoted. Champion, automatic promotion, and then the second spot is through a bloodbath of a uh, playoff uh, system. Uh, and people have asked me, how can I watch the games? And I did the, the homework for you guys. Uh, right now, the team is suing the National League uh, under UEFA Chapter 40, um, which basically states that teams have, have the freedom to pursue any revenue uh, stream they can have. Uh, unfortunately, once a team gets relegated from the English Football League and goes into the National League, the games are, 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 not, are not available, uh, which was my fear when Steven H yeah, last, last season uh, almost got relegated to the National League. Uh, so they, if, if you go to the Facebook page of Wrexham AFC, uh, they're going to try to put as many games as possible. Now, probably they're running into is the other team has to agree uh, to for them to have the games available, and they're only going to be home games for the time being. Uh, if you haven't watched this uh, the the documentary uh, on Hulu, I recommend it. I love football. I can't talk about football all day long, and and all these forms. And uh, what these guys are doing in uh, Wales, it's, uh, it's commendable. Uh, I would like to remind everybody, uh, the legendary David, my vlog, latest episodes are there. Uh, please go and support me. Uh, obviously, support the girls, support us, support Paola with Tiro de Esquina. Uh, the, the end. Uh, next Monday, please be here because we're uh, we, we going to have a fantastic um, uh, guest uh, that uh, is going to shower us with wisdom, stories, and I don't know. Who knows? We may be here for three hours. All right. And um, Emma, anything closing statements you want to give before we go? Just be there on Wednesday for Seattle. I'll be there, and we're going to have a video yeah, message I'll for the one-year anniversary on the board, which is exciting, that's, too. That's awesome. I'm testing out season tickets for next year. For Orlando City, I might switch uh -huh. out my Orlando Pride for Orlando City, which is exciting. Um, 
and I should give Casey the little plug for the Twitter and Instagram and stuff. Yeah, um, you can support us on Twitter at Orlando CityCast and on Instagram at the Orlando CityCast. This, that small difference that's just so funny how I have to say that every episode. Yeah, I, I search you guys through the whole name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, but you know, check them out. It's a fantastic podcast. So very, very excited and very delighted that you, both of you were able to say the whole show. So hopefully it's not the first collab, you know, uh, we would love to have you back uh, for sure. And uh, Paola, any last uh, things that you'd like to say before we go? Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, for being here tonight. Even though it's a school night, don't fall asleep tomorrow at school. Um, on Wednesday, be there, support the boys. The ladies will be there. I will be there too. David and Luis will be there. So there's no excuse that you cannot be there supporting the boys in a work day, school day, night, whatever it you call it, you name it, we will be there. Also, Tiro de Esquina podcast, we will be recording tomorrow. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at T Esquina podcast. Follow us in uh, Instagram as well. You can follow us on Twitter. Look, good, look for the link there. YouTube as well, Tiro Esquina podcast. You will have fun tomorrow. It will be a fun um, episode. So thank you so much. All right. And before we go, again, I want to thank everybody that's been live uh, with us and everybody that's listening to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. Um, you know, check us out on the social media. Oh, there you go. The new one. Uh, social media <laughs> outlets. Where, uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell for all notifications. Uh, like the video, where, um, follow us on Twitter as Loud and Proud Orlando, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And also we are available again on Spotify and Apple Podcasts um, on any platform. Again, we're growing. We're trying to get to the 500 mark. Um, you know, again, uh, pass the word around to your friends. Uh, we're here also. Uh, check out also the Orlando City um, uh, Soccer Cast. Uh, you know, make sure that you're also listening to them. And uh, I guess, guys, vamos Orlando, right? Let's go. Let's win on. Let's win on on Wednesday. Vamos Orlando. Let's go. <laughs>